Hey there, I'm Vidin and today I'm going to walk you through how to build a question answering bot based on a set of documents using the ChatGPT API. First things first, you need to create an OpenAI account in order to get an API key. You can do this by going to openai.com and clicking on the sign up button. You can use your pre-existing Google, Microsoft or Apple accounts or you can create a fresh account. Once you've signed up and in, select API. You can get an API key by clicking on the account icon in the top right hand corner, clicking on view API keys and then clicking on create new secret key. You can add a name to the key for future reference but that's optional. Once you've created the key, remember to copy it and keep it in a safe location because you can't view it again. You get $18 worth of free usage when you create your account without having to enter any card details. This can be viewed by clicking on usage and should last you long enough to get you through the testing phase of a small project. Now that you've gotten an API key, we can move on to using the API. The easiest way to do this is by using a library. These can be found by going to the documentation and then clicking on libraries. OpenAI has created Python and Node.js libraries, but there are community made libraries for pretty much all the popular languages. We're going to be using the Python library for this tutorial the installation instructions for which are pretty straightforward. The primary API that you need to use for this tutorial is the chat completions API. The documentation for which can be found by clicking on GPT and then clicking on chat completions API. When using this API, you have the choice of two different models, either GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo. GPT-4 performs better, but GPT-3.5 is considerably cheaper and faster. However, GPT-4 is still in beta, so you'll have to join a waitlist in order to get access to it. If you're interested, you can join the waitlist by going to openai.com, clicking on product, selecting GPT-4, and then clicking on join API waitlist. But for now, let's continue with GPT-3.5. Before we make our first API call, let's have a look at the API reference, and I'll talk you through some of the important fields. You can find it by going to API reference, and then clicking on chat. The first two fields are the only required fields. In the model field, you specify the model that you want to use, either GPT-3.5 or GPT-4. The messages field is essentially the chat history. As you can see in this example, each message can have one of three roles. System, which serves as instructions for the model, user, which are messages sent by the end user, and assistant, which are responses by the model. Keep in mind that user messages can also instruct the model. The purpose of system messages is for us, the programmer, to instruct the model on its general purpose prior to an interaction with the end user. The other important fields are essentially tuning parameters. The temperature and top three fields control how random the model's responses are, whether the same questions will yield the exact same response. But even at the lowest setting, the model will not be deterministic. That is, the same question will not always yield the same response. The presence penalty field controls the model's likelihood to discuss new topics, and the frequency penalty field controls the model's likelihood of repeating the same line. The other API that you'll need to use for this tutorial is the embeddings API. You can find the documentation for this by clicking on documentation and then on embeddings. You don't really have a choice of models to use here, as the latest model is better on all counts. The API reference can be found by clicking on API reference and then clicking on embeddings. It's far simpler, requiring only two inputs. The model, which is the model that you're going to use, as well as the input text. I'll discuss what exactly embeddings are and how we use them later on. Now, let's try making an API call. First, we need to install the OpenAI library. Then, we need to import it. Next, we can add in our API key. And this enables us to use the chat completion function to make a very basic API call. This is what the response object looks like. It has many important bits of information, but the most important bit is the assistance response. This can be accessed like so. As mentioned previously, we can use system messages to instruct the model prior to any end user interaction. For example, we can instruct the model to respond as a pirate in rhymes. You are a pirate that responds in rhymes. And as you can see, the model has responded accordingly. 
We can even include chat history to provide context for future API calls. For example, you can ask who is the most infamous pirate of all time. And then we can include the response in the next API call. And we can ask a follow-up question, where was he born? And as you can see here, the model knows who you're referring to. GPT has been trained on curated portions of the internet with a knowledge cutoff of September 2021, which is why it inherently knows the answer to these questions. However, you can also provide the model with new knowledge through the user system messages. Let's continue with our example of pirates. This is a short Wikipedia entry for a completely made up pirate named Captain Amelia Redhawk Morgan. If I ask the model the question, who is Captain Amelia Redhawk Morgan? It does not know the answer. It seems to be confusing her with a character of a similar name from the Disney film Treasure Planet. However, if I include the first paragraph of the wiki entry as context for the question and then ask the same question, who is Captain Amelia Redhawk Morgan? It now knows the answer. GPT has a tendency to hallucinate. It makes up answers to questions it does not know the answer to. For example, if I ask the model to describe Captain Emilia Redhawk Morgan's final battle, it makes up a story instead of just admitting that it does not know the answer to the question. To prevent this kind of behavior, you need to explicitly instruct the model on what to do with the new information. You are a helpful assistant that answers questions using only information provided in the wiki below. And if the answer is not contained within the wiki, say, I don't know. Then when you ask the model the same question, it responds with, I don't know. Now, what if you wanted to ask questions about the whole wiki entry? You'd have to include the entire wiki entry as context, but then you might run into issues with the maximum allowable size of the API call. And even if you didn't, the size of the API call is directly proportional to the cost and the response time. And so you'd want to keep it as small as possible. The way to solve this issue is to make use of chunking and embeddings. Chunking is the act of splitting up your text into more manageable sections or chunks, and an embedding is the numerical representation of the meaning of a text. There is no right or wrong way of chunking your documents, but ideally you should chunk it into meaningful sections of roughly equal size. This may not always be possible depending on how your documents are formatted. However, in this particular case, we have clearly marked section headings and each section is of roughly the same size. Now you need to find which chunk is most relevant to the question. This is where embeddings come in. You can use the embedding function to calculate the embeddings for a text. As you can see, it returns a vector of numerical values. You need to calculate the embeddings for the question itself and each of your chunks. And then you need to compare them to find which chunk has the most similar embedding to that of the question. To determine how similar two texts are, you use a similarity function. We will be using cosine similarity here, which is merely the dot product of two embedding vectors. The result is a single value between zero and one, where two completely unrelated texts would produce a value of zero and two identical texts would produce a value of one. This is the similarity between the question and the first chunk. You need to compute the pairwise similarity between the question and all of the chunks. And then you need to select the chunk with the highest similarity. This is the chunk that should be included as context when running the chat completions API call. The API call then produces an appropriate response. Putting it all together in a single function, first you fetch the chunk embeddings which are stored locally. Then you make an embedding API call to calculate the question's embeddings. Then you compute the pairwise similarity between the question and each of the chunks. And you select the highest similarity as the most relevant chunk. And then you make a chat completion API call, including the question itself, as well as the most relevant chunk as context. And then you print the response. So if I run the function with the question, where was she born? the function automatically computes the most relevant chunk and then produces an appropriate response.